had a little time after work, so jump on here and uh, offer insight to, to the dream. See who needed some dream interpretation, more insight into what your own subconscious mind is trying to tell you. So I always like to make myself available uh, for that, you know. So dreams, your dreams are, you know, your dreams are messages to your conscious mind, your waking mind of how you've been using your mind. Because when you go to sleep at night, your consciousness is shifting from your physical body to your astral body. You know, you're closing your eyes, you're removing your attention from all of your physical senses, and then you are going with inward to no longer experience your outer environment, but you're now going to experience your inner environment. And so you're able to experience all of the things going on within your subconscious mind. And so peace, peace, cares, peace, peace to all creation, peace to myself and peace to you too. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So yeah, so you know your your dreams are going to give you insight into how you've been using your mind. So they are the most powerful tool for self awareness. Um, there is nothing more powerful for self awareness than uh, dream work, dream you know loose uh, other other than like further dream work like you, you know lucid dreaming and uh, you know astral projection and things. But only if you really understand the universal language of the mind to be able to decode and decipher what is going on within your dreams, what those images and symbols are telling you. You know what I mean? So whoever had a who 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 be having nightmares? Does anybody in here be having nightmares like tornado dreams or? Dreams of people running, you know, you running from somebody. Somebody shared, like, the most recent dream you had last night. Let's see. Let's see. You know, because I could just be up here bullshitting. You know what I mean? Anybody can write this. You know what I mean? But is it really accurate? Is it really offering you clarity? Who knows? Don't believe anything that I say. You know, create an experience for yourself and find out what's true and what's not. You know what I mean? So, yeah, share share your dreams with me. Let's, let's rock with it. Who had a dream last night that they want to share? Anyone. Anyone. Me in the kitchen eating chips with my niece. Okay, I had a dream you fed my mom. I'm not even falling into that trap. <laughs> Kez, on to you, Kez. <laughs> me, in the kid, me in the kitchen. Hey, Kez, share the live. Appreciate it. He gets a follow as always. Me in the kitchen eating chips with my niece. Okay, food. Food is <laughs> Freddy. Freddy funny, boy. <laughs> but uh, food... food you know, hey, all love, bro, always love. <laughs> so food is, you know, well, first of all, dreams, when you, we interpret dreams, it's in the universal language of the mind because it's in a language of images because that's how our minds communicate. We communicate in images. You know what I mean? I have an image in my mind, and then I use my words to describe that image, and then you receive those words to, and use those to create your own image. But the way that the subconscious mind communicates to the conscious mind is that it just gives the image directly with no words needed. And so we need to understand these images because those images represent our thoughts because we think in images. You know what I mean? If you, if you were to tell me what, uh, what you had for breakfast, you could describe it because you see the image within your mind. Hey, goddess mode activated. Did you ever get signed up and signed in and joined in? Jeff, what's going on, brother? What's up, fam? How are we to doing today? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm on a water fast. Well, liquid, liquid fast, so I got my water and things. Figure I'd cap off the day with uh, with you all on a live and then do, do a meditation and then take my ass to sleep off into the astral. You know what I mean? I got some tea right here. Had some sarsaparilla tea earlier, some uh, moringa tea, and then uh, some passion flower tea right here. Ooh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So anyways, like I was saying, you know, when you go to sleep at night and, and dream, your, your dreams are in images because our minds communicate in images. Our thoughts are images. So when you understand that, you can understand the dream. So food, you know, Kez said, hey, let me bring it back for y'all. If I missed your dream, just, just put it back in and, uh, and I'll get to it. Okay, so Kez was in the kitchen eating chips with his niece, right? So food... You, when you uh, interpret the images within your dreams, you have to look at the form. What is the form? So food is the form. And what is its function? The function of food is to provide us with nutrients so that we can, as a, as a human body, can permanently absorb those nutrients and they become a permanent part of the self. You know what I mean? We, we use our teeth to break down the food so that we can better digest what's going on so we can better swallow what, what we're, what we're uh, eating. And then when we digest that, the nutrients are extracted. And then once the nutrients are extracted, then we can let go of the waste. 
So food in a dream is going to represent knowledge because like our, our like food, our not our life experiences, we break them down. We when we break down our life experiences, it's easier to digest what's happened. It's easier to swallow what's occurred. You know, and then the understandings that we build from the life lessons that we can learn from those life experiences will will be absorbed into the soul for us to permanently become a part of ourselves. That that knowledge and wisdom will become a part of ourselves moving forward when we learn the life lessons from life. So food will represent that knowledge contained within our life experiences. The things that we have the opportunity to learn and understand about ourselves through the experiences that we're moving through. So if you're having a dream like Kez where you're eating chips with your niece in the kitchen, then very simply, it's going to represent how you have been absorbing the knowledge within your life experiences. You know, so if you had a dream like this, so for Kez, lay back and, and look at the recent experiences you've had the last day or two and really look and examine what have you learned late recently? What have you learned about yourself? You know, what have your life experiences afforded you to learn? You know what I mean? Summer's coming to an end and school is starting. You know, so have you learned anything about freedom, about liberty, about leadership, about uh, creativity, uh, you know, festivity, fun, happiness? You know, what I mean, I don't know who knows. Maybe you learned something about discipline, responsibility. You know, what has life been teaching you? And this dream is showing you that you have been learning this this uh, lesson that you have available to you. So uh, here we go. Another most most recent one here. Goblin says, I had a dream I peed in my bed. Woo! So, right on, right in line with the food. When you absorb the nutrients in your body, the rest of the food is, is let go of through the waste. Either you shit it out or you piss it out, right? That's the part of the that's the part of the food and drink that you no longer need. So you, your body lets it go because it's toxic. You know what I mean? If you were to hold on to it, it's toxic. You know, it's not it's not really toxic, but if you were to hold on to it and not piss it out or shit it out, it would become toxic. Just like with your life experiences, if you hold on to them and you know, if, if, if you have, if you have an argument with your best friend and then you never let that go, you know what I mean? You never identify what you can learn about yourself through the experience. You never learn from it. You know, maybe you need to learn something about forgiveness or communication um, or friendship. You know what I mean? And if you never learn those things, then you're going to hold a grudge against your friend and never let it go. And then that's going to become toxic to you. Just like the, the shit, if you never let it go, it's going to become toxic to you. So peeing, using the bathroom is going to represent, um, you know, letting things go. And so release, you know, releasing your thoughts and emotions, but this dream, you pissed the bed. You know what I mean, for this dream, you peed in the bed. So a bed, a bed is going to represent assimilation because when we go to sleep at night, we are we are ex have an opportunity to examine our dreams. Whether you remember dreams or not, they're happening, right? And the better that you can recall the dreams and the better that you can interpret the dreams and primarily the better that you can identify what you have to learn from that and from that, that the dream is trying to tell you, then the better you can recycle the energy back into yourself that you spent the day, you know, utilizing and, 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 and um, uh, using the energy you've been using. Then, so the bed will represent assimilation, you know, assimilating the life experiences. So if you've peed in the bed, then that will represent a way in which you need to um, better assimilate what's been going on in your life so that you can truly and more health in a more healthy way, let go of the thoughts and emotions that are going on, you know? So, you know, if maybe, maybe you've had an experience recently that you've had a hard time forgiving someone or maybe even forgiving yourself. Um, so that's what a dream like this would represent is identify, really look at what you can learn from the ex whatever the experience was that it was having a hard time to forgive either someone else or yourself. Look at what you have the opportunity to learn and understand through that. Um, and then, and then move forward with that. Nobody can tell you your dreams. Only you can start writing them and reflecting them. Uh, yeah, the, your dreams are in the universal language of the mind. It's a universal language. Someone can definitely tell you what those symbols represent. But yes, in, in uh, uh, agreement to what you're saying, only you can actually interpret the dream. So like, like with a uh, goblin there, you know, there was something there for like a need to forgive someone most likely or yourself. Uh, but 
he only he can identify what that's really talking about because only he has been living his life and knows what's going on within his mind, his thoughts and emotions and his life experiences. But you can definitely <laughs> use the universal language of the mind to identify any symbol with 100% accuracy and clarity. I, I guarantee you that. But like I always say, don't believe anything that I say. Don't believe anything I say. Find ways to find out what's true for yourself. All right. So Jade and Jolie says, I had a dream about an old friend. My man at the time just kept popping up like he was just there. Okay, well, what was going on? What was going on in the dream? Oh, okay. Got a little got a little hat and an extra mustache. <laughs> y'all, y'all doing the most on here. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. Uh, I had a dream about an old friend. So mostly you want to look at what's happening in the dream here. You know, so you're pretty much just telling me who's in the dream. So an old friend, my man kept popping up like he was just there. But what's actually happening in the dream? What are these characters along with yourself actually doing in the dream? Right. So people will represent the different characteristics within our own personality. Right. So every person, place or thing in a dream is an aspect of your own consciousness. Because like I said, when you go to sleep at night, you're closing your eyes, you're, you're removing your attention from the outer world, and you're going within to experience your inner world. So all of the characters are in there are the characters of your inner world. Just like when you're watching a movie, all of the characters in there, even though you've seen that actor in other movies, in this movie, that actor represents a character within this world. So even though you may know these people in your dream, they are representing a characteristic of your own personality within your own consciousness, your world. So what do they represent? You know, so what 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 is going on with them is, is even more accurate of what you want to look at, what is what they are doing in the dream versus who is in the dream. So pretty much also, if you do want to go deeper with it on who who they are, your subconscious mind is using that person's face to help you identify a part of yourself. So what's the main quality that you see in that person? You know what I mean? What's the main characteristic that you see in them when you think of them? And that's going to help you to identify the part of yourself that your own subconscious mind is trying to tell you something about. I guess I was interested in him, so I went home, and he was just there in the room. Ah, okay, okay. So so there was a person in the dream, if I'm gathering this correctly, there was a person in the dream you were wanting to get closer to but your man at the time was kind of getting in the way. So what I would suggest is identify who that other person is because that's something that you are wanting, some characteristic you are wanting to build and become, bring more to the forefront. So for example, maybe you're, um, maybe the person that you're, you're, uh, that's in the dream with you is represents resp a res they're a responsible person. And so that's going to represent how you are wanting to become more responsible. You are desiring to connect with that responsible part of yourself and bring it more to the forefront so that it can have more uh, involvement within your everyday life. All right. All right. Mickey. Mickey says, had a dream that my dead sis walked a man I was walked a man I was dating in, into a room to me. OK, like she was delivering him. Oh, OK. Wow. All right, yeah, let's pin this so everybody can see what your dream is talking about. Okay, I had a dream that my sister who had passed walked a man that I was dating into the room like she was presenting, like she was delivering him. So again, this is people. More people in the dreams. There's not much context of what's happening, but your sister, even though she has passed on, whatever, whatever quality that you see within her is going to, your subconscious mind is using her in order for you to identify that part of yourself, okay? And then the person that you're dating is, you know, is is, is another part of your uh, aspect of your personality. So what you want to do is really identify how you see these people. What is the main quality that you see in these people? Like, for instance, maybe if your sister, you see her as loyal, very loyal, and then your uh, the person you're dating, you see as very honest, then that's going to show you that your loyalty is ushering in and bringing your honesty more to the forefront. Or it's going to be showing that in order to increase your lo being loyal to yourself, you need to become more honest with yourself because your dreams are always about you, the person dreaming, you know? So, but you have to identify what, what these people in your life represent, the main quality you see in them for you to be able to identify what the dream is trying to take, tell you. She always took care of me. Okay, so a caretaker, 
So she's probably you probably see her as a caretaker. So you probably exhibit those same similar qualities in some form or fashion, a caretaker, and most likely taking care of yourself. So through taking care of yourself, then what is the quality, the main quality that you see in your man at the time? Bro, you're not Daniel, the Israelite prophet of God. You even know who Daniel, what Daniel represents? Because this language in the universal language of the mind is to be used for far more than just dreams. It's also to be used in, in it, just, uh, just decoding the Holy Scriptures, including the Bible. So do you even know what Daniel represents? Do you even know what that story represents? You, you Like, come on. Uh, does anyone feel their soul coming back to their body before waking up? Nothing on Google helps. <laughs> yes, I have because I have been in, uh, had my conscience in my soul coming back. Oh, not Matt LB. Oh, not Matt LB. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Never mind. It's somebody else. I thought, I thought this was the Michigan fan. <laughs> I thought this was the Michigan fan. Not recently, but used to all the time. Yeah, let them know, Kaz. Kaz, the senior mentee. He'll let you know. But uh, what she's asking about here. So when you are when you are dreaming, you're you're not dreaming, you're not seeing things with your physical eyes. Yes, it's absolutely normal. You're not seeing things with your physical eyes. You are not experiencing things with your physical body. You are experiencing them with your astral body, the senses of the astral body. Now, most people are not aware of the moment when their astral body leaves their physical body to go into the astral plane and dream. And they are not aware of when their astral body leaves the astral plane to come back to their physical body after they're done dreaming. They just whoop, wake up, right? But for you, it seems like you have been experiencing, you have become more and more, you're becoming more and more aware of the moment when your soul is coming back into your body. You know, the soul is made up of four bodies, actually. And so the astral, the two of the astral bodies are just two of those bodies. You know, you also have the mental body and emotional body. Or, I mean, sorry, you have the astral body, mental body, um, emotional body, and your etheric body. So, yes, that is normal. All right. When we dream, are we entering an alternate parallel dimension? Ah, great question. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Let me let you know. Let me let you in on something. You know, in your individual ray of light, your I am. You know what I mean? Why in the why in the Bible does it say I am? You know what I mean? Yahweh. Yahweh. Y'all know what Yahweh means? Why does Yahweh mean I am? The name of God is I am. It's that for that for a reason. So that when you read it, you read, I am your God. You know what I mean? I am your God. I am your God. You know what I mean? So, but anyways, you also have your your consciousness uses these different vehicles, a body, a soul, and a spirit to traverse these different planes of existence, these seven different planes of existence within these three different dimensions, the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension. And these vehicles use the conscious mind, the physical body uses the conscious mind in the third dimension, the soul uses the subconscious mind in the fourth dimension, and the spirit uses the superconscious mind in the fifth dimension. But these are just all vehicles and tools in order for you to know who you are. Oh, you pause. Can I start again? Uh, I don't know about starting again, but because I have tons of videos on all of this. But um, but when you go to sleep at night, your consciousness is shifting from your physical body into your soul, and you are moving and experiencing in the inner levels of the subconscious mind. So it is in the fourth dimension. That's why, you know, the fourth dimension is time. So that's why you can have precognitive dreams and you can perceive different different lines of probability of what may occur within your future based upon the choices and actions and thoughts and emotions of yourself and the people and things within your environment. Or you can uh, experience past life experiences. You can go into the Akashic records here in between the lower and upper astral and you can access your own Akashic records and see what was going on in your own past life. All of that is possible. I dream about a house that was new on the outside, but old on the inside. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. So that represents that because uh, uh, when we go and, and dream, the language of the universal language of the mind that these dreams are in is a language of form and function, like I said earlier. So you look at the form and what is its function? Well, a house is a place. 
And what's the function of a place? Well, it gives you a space to exist. Like right now, the space that you're in is the space where you exist. Well, how does that relate to the consciousness? What is the space in which you exist within your mind, your state of mind, your frame of mind? So houses will represent your state of mind. That's why it, when you dream, you're never going to you're almost never going to be in a house that has more than 3 floors. You know what I mean? If it has more than 3 floors, then it's going to end up being a really large building like a hospital or apartment or hotel or a skyscraper. But a house is going to have three floors because the first floor is going to represent the conscious mind. The second floor will represent the subconscious mind. And the third floor or the attic will represent the superconscious mind. And the basement will represent the unconscious. 